Enjoy 24, episode 74. Today we had Sinaz said so on the podcast. She is a former sideline and ESPN reporter, and currently she's on uh, the show Football is Sexy, where their mission is to unite people all around the world through football in a very inclusive and safe space. And she is also a uh, color commentator on The Fighter and the Kid. Make sure to tune in. It was a great episode. Enjoy your 24. Peace. I'm going to be honest with you. I did not know who was playing in football today. I, che- I don't even know what to say to you. I checked last night. And is it Dallas? The Cowboys are playing? Yes. The Packers are playing the Cowgirls. And then the Rams are playing the Lions. And then uh, tomorrow you got Steelers, Bills, Eagles, Bucks. You're a big football fan, huh? I'm a, you know what? Oddly enough, yeah, I like football, but knowledge wise, I know a lot more about basketball. I could probably coach a basketball team. Um, but it's like basketball, football, hockey, baseball. I had to learn because I worked in baseball for a minute, but I've just always been like a sports nut. And right now, you know, it's Sunday. I'm like, I, I go by the day of like what's on and what I can do today. You know, like, okay, there's football and today I'll watch football. The other night I was just all into my hockey. So it, it really just depends. It's it's very aggravating to be around me when uh, the sports are in season. But yeah. I mean, growing up in Orange County, like, I mean, dude, my dad, like, learned how to be an American coming here, going to SC and going to games at the Forum and watching the Lakers, you know, and full circle moment for me. I now, you know, Football Sexy records out of the Ice House in Pasadena, who's which is owned by Johnny Buss, who owns the Lakers. And I get to, like, hang out with Johnny Buss. And I'm like, this is the raddest thing ever. Like, I was raised a Laker fan. Holy so, shit. yeah. Yeah, dude. Bit, and I like MMA, too. So that yeah, makes yeah. it easy, like, with Fighter and the Kid to talk MMA. MMA, I definitely got into during COVID when that was the only thing on. Basketball, I'm, you know, I played college basketball, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Lakers fan. So, love that. Y- you know, Kobe. I'm, I'm not a LeBron fan. Exactly. Okay, good. You're here. All you had to say. There you go. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole reason why I started the podcast because of Kobe. Here's the thing, though. Do you think, like you said, like your dad had to learn to become American? Was it because, do you mean in the sense that living in LA, especially LA with the Lakers, the the Rams, the Dodgers, like you, you were almost like forced to like sports. Like if you don't like at least one of those teams, you're a bit of a weirdo. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, especially I mean, living in the States. I feel like that's kind of like the vibe there. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, he came here from Iran. He had to learn how to like Americanize himself. And and that's what it was. He attached himself to the Lakers. And, you know, my dad was a soccer player. He played at SC soccer. And, um, but the Lakers are where it came like full circle for him. And uh, I, I mean, I, I'll tell you this. One of my first ever real locker room interview that I got to run was with Kobe Bryant and um, like stands out in my head. Like you wouldn't believe I, I I am a huge, huge Kobe fan. Um, LeBron, I try to get behind, but you know, I, I, I'm not, it's not my shtick. He's not my fave. You know what I mean? Um, So it's a little tough, but you know, if he's wearing the purple and gold, I'm going to support him. Mm -hmm. But Kobe to me is the goat. He's the all time best. I mean, you know, I, I love the argument of like Jordan Kobe, like, okay, well, remember, like, man defense wasn't allowed at one point in the NBA. You know, it, it's people forget these things. And like, I will take that sort of talent and athleticism any day right. over anyone else. Like, the stories of Kobe being first to practice and last to leave are true. I worked like a practices for many years. Um, he hated when people would screw around. I remember there was a day Sasha Vujicic and um, F- Jordan Farmar were like, messing around and like kicking the ball and trying to kick it into the basket and he snapped like that just wasn't okay with him like he was there to work he he really took his time seriously when he was there because when he was there he was on and when he'd go home he would be with his family and he loved Vanessa and loves those girls so much and Mm. I think we can all remember where we were the day when we heard that news and we were like heartbroken yeah I it's still uh it's so yeah it's so clear in my head the day i was that it was just um i still like i'm still not over it. i still really haven't even processed i don't think i ever will it's kind of it, kobe's one of those guys like it was, he was immortal to me it was just like me like my family i could never see anything happen to him and then and then it was him and then when that happened i still i really really can't believe it so you you worked around the lakers and you were around kobe a lot yeah um in college i took an internship with kcal 9 and cbs sports 
at the time, KCAL 9 was what they called the home of the Lakers. This is before Time Warner. And all the away games were always only shown on KCAL 9. That's it. And um, doing that, you know, I, I would cover Laker practices as well. Obviously, we would only be showing away games, but it was it was huge. And, you know, I started working with uh, big game James Worthy. He was technically my first boss. Uh, love him to death. And uh, Eric Karos from the Dodgers, who I gave so much crap to because I'm not a Dodgers fan. And Jim Hill, who's a Charger great. And uh, I started game logging, which is essentially sitting down and looking off a master clock and being like 12, 24, 22, Kobe air hook, 12, 22, 45. Oh, like, shit. You, know, you were just, that person. Oh, yeah. I was that person Holy writing shit. down every single play and then highlighting what I thought was worth making a reel over and then giving it to my producer who would clip the clips I wanted. And then once I started doing it more and more, they allowed me to write script for James because uh, James trusted me and he kind of understood the way I talked. He understood my like candor and trusted what I picked to be worth talking about. And uh, it was then that James and Jim were like, this girl's got way too much attitude. She needs to be in front of a camera. And I was like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. I, don't, I, I didn't have the face for it. I don't have a voice for it. But <clears throat> they started taking me to Laker games. And uh, I would go do locker room interviews at Laker games. And literally, when you're in a locker room, like first you have to shake the fact that you're in a Laker locker room. Mm -hmm. yeah, that yeah. is holy ground. Okay? Like, know your place and know how lucky you are to be there. Mind your P's and Q's and don't do anything stupid. Um, going into that locker room, it's like 20 people bulldozing in after a game. And everyone's just trying to push their microphone up towards whatever athlete you're talking to. Mm. And somebody will shoot out a question and then you'll get off that sound clip. It's not like everybody gets a turn. It's whoever can get it out and get it to be the smartest, which is so much like pressure under. Like you don't want to say something stupid. No. You know? Yeah. Um and uh, I started doing that, and that my first ever real question that I got to ask was with Kobe, because oh, somebody hit me in the back of the head with a camera, and I like jolted forward, and he got really upset, and he was like, "Stop, everybody, stop! Turn off your cameras, take steps back." And we were all like, "Oh my god, what's happening? Is Kobe not going to do interviews today? We don't know." So we all took steps back, and he looked at me, and he was like, "You come forward, and everybody else is going to learn how to act when there's a lady in the locker room. Whoa. You can start." And Till this day, people talk about that moment. And I was like shaking. I mean, I could not. I, I, I was terrified. I don't even remember what my question was. Oh, I was going to ask you, what did you ask him? I don't, I don't remember. I was blacked out. Literally, like, here I am in front of Kobe Bryant. Like, he's allowing me to run the show right now. And it was, it was terrifying. But he could see I was scared. And, like, he really did help me. That was the thing about him. He, even though his job was to play basketball, like, he understood other people's positions. He understood this is a reporter. He understood this is a janitor. Like I, I never saw him be bad to anyone um, coming into the arena. And he, it was so insane. I mean, what's funny is I, I, I never really got starstruck with him. I can tell you I got starstruck when I met Kareem Abdul-Jabbar because okay. the minute Jim Hill was like, Kareem, this is Sana's. He looked right at me and started speaking fluent Farsi. <laughs> This man not only knew I was Iranian, but can speak fluent Farsi. I think he speaks like nine languages fluently. Is that a and fact? I'm just sitting. Kareem yeah, can no, speak I think Farsi. It's nine. Yes, spoke Farsi to me. Holy shit! Heard my name and knew I was Iranian. It was, and he literally said, "No, you're Iranian." I was like, "Oh my gosh, he's saying Iran, not Iran." God bless this man. <laughs> like, it was, it was. I, I that to me, I'll, I'll tell you what, him and Stone. If I ever met Stone Cold Steve Austin like get me an ambulance i won't be well stone cold huh you know like okay. oh my gosh i will i will not be well if it happens i can't i just and it's funny too because uh brendan's like friends with him and it had him on the show and brendan's like yeah we've had him on i'm like i'm telling you right now dude if you ever try and bring him on here and you don't give me like days notice i will leave because i won't be able to physically handle it yeah, i need yeah. to mentally prepare if i'm going to be near him for stone cold so, oh my god oh shit okay yeah. Like, oh my dude, God. Yeah. that Kobe story is one of the greatest things I've it's it's amazing. I mean, he just get because he's just a oh man. He was serious, man. Like he just he would give you the biz, you know, he would he didn't give a shit. OK, 
I want to ask you about this. I feel like, and I know your football is your thing, and we're, we're going to talk about football is sexy, but yeah. basketball is my thing, and obviously you're very in tune with basketball as well. I was born in 95, right? So I grew up with, like, Kobe, D. Wade, Carmelo, KG, LeBron, Tim Duncan, all those guys. And I don't know, man. Like, when I was growing up and I was in high school playing basketball, it was just a bit different in the sense that people in the league, like players in the league weren't friends. Like pe- Kobe, like for example, Kobe didn't really talk to anyone when he was on the court. Um, he didn't like, he, it's just little things. Like if someone fell, fell down right beside him, that he wouldn't help them up. Players really disliked each other. There wasn't this like weird, like friendship thing after games where they would actually like talk and see what's up and, the league just really rubs me off the wrong way. And you see these guys like Draymond and I mean, Draymond's different. Draymond's a fucking maniac. I actually kind of like Draymond, but like Paul George, like he, he has a podcast and he brings current players on the pocket. It's great. Like you're doing other things outside of basketball and you're setting yourself up for life after basketball. But it's just this weird vibe. Like how do you, how is, how do you bring you know, a current player that you're competing against onto the pod to talk about, you know, just your journey and the times you've had in the NBA. And then you go out the next night or a month later competing against that same guy. Like, I just don't, it doesn't have this like same intensity and like ferociousness to it. I, and I kind of, I'm, I'm not very, I, it's kind of turning me off from the NBA and, do you sense that? Like, what is, do you think it's good that that's kind of happening or do you sense it and you just kind of let it happen? You're like, okay, I mean, well, this is the league we live in. This is the world we live in now. No, it bums me out. Are you kidding me? No, I, I miss the days when, you know, Kobe was on Team USA playing against Pau Gasol in Spain and going, that ain't my teammate. I'm going to go first play, get out here and just juke the hell out of you, mm. throw you to the ground and remind you, you are not my teammate today. Yeah. Like, I, I love that. The, the swag of basketball has died down. And I think it's because it's becoming more of a job and less of a, like, team-like sport. And that's what bums me out a lot, is that I don't see that fire anymore. You know, I, I, when is the last time we had a real rivalry, like the Lakers and the Celtics? When is the last time we had someone like Ray Allen talking open trash on Kobe? Like, it just doesn't happen anymore, mm. you know? And it bums me out. I mean, man, I would argue get Smush Parker back in the league so we have someone with a bit of an attitude. Draymond Green, yeah, listen, I think he is a psycho. Like, <laughs> at some point, someone's got to step in and be like, yo, what's going on? Get him zen in the art of motorcycle maintenance and have him read it and, I don't know, dude, get, get Jackson out here. But I, we need a little more grit. I feel like there's not a lot of grit anymore. Right. And it's become kind of boring. My my kid brother the other day was telling me, yo, I'm going to be serious. He's like, I have a hard time watching basketball right now. And I'm like, I get it. It's boring. It's boring. You, and then yeah. you go to the extreme of like Draymond rear naked choking and hammer fisting people. And you're like, okay, well, I don't want this either. Like, where's the yeah. middle ground? Where's the trash uh, talk? Yeah, no, I get it. Like, what Draymond's doing is outlandish. It's out of pocket. But I would rather have that than have Ja Morant laughing and talking to the Warriors after. Dude, I remember. That, dude, it's so bad. So the Warriors, this was the year the Warriors made the finals. And they they actually beat the Celtics. They beat the Grizzlies. And after this, after they beat the Grizzlies, I remember Ja Morant was, A, he's obviously fucking injured because he's soft. And he's on the sideline and he's like, he's, he literally just lost the series. He's out of the playoffs. His season's done. And he's just like shooting the shit with Draymond and clay. And it's just, dude, you, and man, it just imagine Kobe doing that, like going up to, no. you know, Ginobili or Tony Parker after him being like, Oh dude, like see you see this summer oh you want to come on my pod like dude i don't know i maybe i'm just old no. i don't know maybe i'm just getting old i don't know what it is i mean no 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 you're not it, look the league has changed when they would lose vanessa wouldn't come down to the tunnel because she knew kobe was going to be in a mood there, there was no tougher locker room to be in than a laker locker room when they lost and i've been in losing locker room but the energy kobe would bring was just 
heavy when was, they would lose. Was he scary? And was he sorry? I sorry. Intimidating for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You're not interrupting. Um, no, intimidating for sure. For sure, because he would get so upset about losing that you would almost be like, "You, rem- I hope he remembers who I am. And he'll go easy on me." But like he couldn't. His brain was just focused on we just lost. I just wasted a game. I'm not in the mood, but let's do this because I know I have to. And he was always polite. Don't get me wrong. You know, that's the thing I hate when people ask like, oh, is so-and-so cool? Is so-and-so cool? You're like, don't ask me if they're cool. Ask me if they were polite because I don't spend too much time with each one of these players. I've worked with certain athletes over the years, like repetitively to where I could tell you if they're awesome people or not. But like sometimes, you know, it's just, dude. And then the drama, I think we're forgetting the drama. Like remember when... Delonte West was hooking up with LeBron James' mom. <laughs> like that threw some drama into the mix, and like was, that would make things spicy. You guys don't remember that? I, I do. I, you know, I remember. Was it confirmed though? Or I, the, the, yeah, it was confirmed. No way. That's do you know that for a fact? I mean, I'm not going to say for a fact, but it, I, I heard from multiple sources that was that was a thing. Holy you know, and shit. then. When I was with the Lakers, it was when the rumor was going around that Shannon Brown had been hooking up with Pau Gasol's fiance. <laughs> and that was the demise of that season is that there was so much drama in that locker room. And that drama would just break teams apart. And I feel like you kind of see it with certain teams now. Like you're like, mm, something's off. I know there's some drama going on in that locker room. But and lately, it's just kind of boring, and and, and you know, like I don't di- I don't get the in season tournament. I don't yeah, get it. I don't know. Either. Like when they're like, "Oh, this is more incentive. Get out of here." The incentive is to win the championship. Mm. Oh, you've given everybody what is it? An extra hundred k? But like, I just didn't get that. Like, no. look, the Lakers won the in season tournament, right? They're not doing that great otherwise. Yeah. No, I. So I agree. It's just very gimmicky. It's. Why? Yeah, I just feel, it, it just shows where the league's going. It's just they need to motivate players to actually play the game now. I mean, it's just not even. That's the th- crazy thing about. I mean, here's the thing though. I, if I was in the NBA and I was getting millions of dollars a year, I mean, would I be as motivated to go out and? I don't know. I. It's just. It's just a different vibe. It's just a different game. People like they. Guys just play because they just play and just get the paycheck and I don't know. I'm it's I, sad. But don't you think that's the problem with all sports right now? Like, I mean, it's ridiculous. I think like first off, let's let's remember this. To make it into the NBA, I think it's like a point oh three percent chance. Mm. So that's something, right? You should be like, holy crap, like I made it to the NBA. That's a big deal. There are a lot of talented players. I love college basketball. I'm not a big college football girl. There are a lot of talented players out there and they don't make it. So you would think like those who made it are like, oh my gosh, here I am, you know? But you throw that money in front of them. I mean, like, look at look at the MLB. Mm. Look at the deal they just gave Shohei. Give me a break, which borderline, it to me, that deal with the Dodgers is the closest to being an illegal deal they could come up with <laughs> and it really rivals like an NFL contract to me. But money has become so extreme and so important. But remember something to me, that money is important to that top 5%. Mm. Not everybody is making the millions. Look at an NFL team. There are people who aren't making, I mean, look at Brock Purdy. He's the cheapest starting quarterback in the league. Right. You know, like, yeah. He's not even making a million a year, but you know, he'll get that bag next year. You're going to believe that. Mm. But there are a ton of players that are struggling and making that league minimum and and they're trying to like get their name up there, but we don't know their names and we don't remember their names. Right. You I mean, know, so now we're only about salaries. Do you think that there maybe should be a, a minimum salary and even maybe a cap? I mean, cause the amount of money that some of these players are making is just obscene. Why does anybody need to make 10, $12 million a year. I mean, you can live, have a great living. I'm not saying pay them half a million, whatever. They could even make a one, two, three, even up to 5 million. But when you get into these tens of millions of dollars, it just seems kind of obscene to me. It's beyond obscene. And yeah, yeah, I do agree with that. And I'll argue you this, with the new NIL stuff, like college players, there's a college kid making $5 million a year right now. And he's in college. Mm. Just think about this. Brock Purdy, about to go to the Super Bowl, not making a million, living in an apartment with an offensive lineman, has a roommate, and this college kid's making $5 million. 
what incentive does this college kid have? Like he's already in his mind made it. You know, right, there yeah. should be a cap. I think I think in college there should be a cap for sure. These kids don't need to be making that much money. And I think I I, I like the idea of a cap in, in all sports. You know, I mean, I'll tell you this. I'm a huge hockey nerd. Like those guys don't make this kind of money. No. And those guys are literally in car accidents every game. Mm -hmm. That is the equivalency of a car accident. When you get hit on the ice and you're slammed against a board, you know, it's insane living in Orange County. Like, I'll, you know, you go out somewhere, you're going to spot Austin Eckler when you're going to Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. You're not, you're not going to not know, but you don't know who Trevor Zegras is. No, you, you don't know who Adam Henrique is. I mean, unless you were the Ryan gets laughs, uh, you know, but like no one recognizes the hockey guys around here and it's because the money isn't there, right? Yeah. The money just isn't there. Is it, I think giving, go ahead. Sorry. It, and is that a direct, cause I was going to bring up hockey cause they don't make shit. I mean, even the 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 best of the best like McDavid what does he make like 10 million at most something yeah yeah I'm, no it, is that just a direct correlation of just the amount of fans and viewership that um goes to hockey in the NHL or is it like what's the deal that like how do why do some leagues pay more than others yeah I think it directly comes down to viewership right and where the money is you know and and then you have to look at the the economics of games and arenas like look at an nfl arena versus a hockey arena you're mm -hmm. filling more butts and seats over there there's more ways to make money and the nhl you know i'll be honest with you about like 10 years ago i thought the nhl was going to go away it, it just there's not a lot of love for it there's more love where you guys are in canada obviously it's so tough it, it, it's so tough out here especially for hockey players like they don't make much but you know they work just as hard their season's just as long like there's injuries left and right i mean look uh, Bedard, who was supposed to be like the next Gretzky, just broke his ankle. No, his, like, jaw, his jaw. His jaw. Oh, his jaw. My his, God, I'm like confusing. I now. he grew up yeah. in North Van, where I'm from. Oh no way. Yeah. So Bedard was supposed to be an Anaheim Duck, but thank you very much to the league. You can't even put our cue card up, right? You're flipping it upside down. Thanks so much. You know, but like we were supposed to get him, but you know, he went off to the Blackhawks because I don't think the league would ever let the Ducks get a player like Bedard. <laughs> but um, I don't. What do you want me to say? Wait, wait. Like, so what happened with the the card thing? I don't. I didn't hear about. You that. don't remember? No, you don't I remember during the draft when they were pulling up. Like now, with the the second pick goes to, and they hold up the card, and it has like the player, the team logo on it. Our logo was upside down. Okay, so but what, what does that mean? But, okay, but what does it that just, mean? Though? Don't respect the Anaheim Ducks. Oh, okay, me, yeah, yeah. There's okay. no respect for the Anaheim Ducks as an organization, <laughs> and I will argue with you. The Samuelis who own the Ducks are two of the kindest people in the world, and they love hockey. They love and live and die for that team, and I just can't wait for the Ducks to actually get a shot. And um, I think it'll come in the next few years. We've got a lot of young talent on there. I really hate that we just get, let Drysdale go. Really bums me out. Drysdale, that's, but, um, uh, he's on the Edmonton now, right? Yeah. yeah okay. Dude, the Canucks but, are killing it this year. No, yeah. I know. Yeah. No, they're doing good. Yeah, but... They, um, I, I mean, I love when we play Canadian teams. Yeah. But the arena is mostly Canadians when we do. So it's right, just, yeah. I, I heard a rumor it's cheaper for you guys to come down here, get a hotel, go to a Ducks game than it is for you to go to a game in Canada. Um, I mean, for Canucks game, it's it's relatively cheap, I would say. I mean, especially last year when we're we were completely ass. Um, that was I mean, yeah, the, the you, you could get a ticket for like 20 bucks Canadian. Um, but since yeah. now that we're actually good where I, it's i don't think it's that expensive no i mean yeah yeah i don't know yeah i i never understood that um i a, a very good friend of mine uh his name is steve rucha and he played for the ducks and the rangers and i always ask him because you know he lives he splits his time between canada and here and i ask him that and he's like you know it's just different it's a different beast in canada than it is here right so that's the other thing that sucks right like this is a professional athletic team and they don't feel the support from their own fans Mm. think about that take the money out of it for a second here you are giving your body your relationship your life to something and your fans are booing you get out of here bro right get out yeah. of here like no yeah we we I, I can personally speak as canucks fans as people that live in vancouver we jump off like we we start we stop supporting the minute they turn to shit and it's it's pretty much instant you know and 
now that now that we're good obviously now we're on the bandwagon a lot of more people are going to their games i see way more stories on instagram go canucks go now at people that weren't canucks fans or don't even know anything about sports and suddenly um canucks fans and on that note i hate okay so i've hated the raptors all my life i hate toronto as I, i'm not a fan of toronto i think really yeah no i don't i mean what they just think they're more pre- they're just pretentious i mean they do have drake they have the maple leaves they have the raptors but they they're where they're very very standoffish much more than vancouver and vancouver's very standoffish if you haven't been to vancouver i'll let you know vancouver's mm-hmm. just not we're we're not we're not nice so that no whole notion of canadians being nice is complete bullshit i've talked about this on last previous episodes so um when the Raptors were in the finals against the Warriors, that was the most anxiety I've ever had for a sporting event going on ever in my life because no. it was overwhelmingly annoying to see how many people that aren't basketball fans, don't know a, a lick of basketball, don't know anything about it, are all are suddenly Raptors fans. and it And it was just one of the most like overwhelming things and the thing that bothers me and people don't really realize it's like oh it's canada's team no it's toronto's team toronto Mm -hmm. and i guarantee and i know for a fact toronto people that live in toronto and toronto fans they look at every other province in canada are like okay well why you guys i mean thanks for the thanks for the support but this is still our team like you know what i mean like this is still toronto we we still claim Mm -hmm. it's cool that you guys are supporting and cheering for us but like fuck you guys it doesn't really matter so i was actually and geographically it kind of makes sense to cheer for the warriors that year i mean we're west coast so oh so i don't know i was literally the one of the only people that was heartbroken that the raptors won i was pissed so i that's wild to me i i cannot believe i'm hearing this yeah, I I don't know. I've never been a fan of that. I've the fans are corny. Even when KD tore his Achilles, yeah, I think you you remember that they were, yeah, they were high, they were just cheering about it and stuff. And yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just it, that that series was wild though. You know, um, I, you know what? I don't hate the Warriors. First off, I like Steve Kerr. I used to really like Steve Kerr. He's kind of letting me down now. Clay is a beast. Clay, I just. I don't know how you can get so lucky to have Clay Thompson on your team. He's such an intelligent player. I actually, uh, when I started working with the Lakers, I worked with his dad, Michael, a lot. Okay. And he was the like, toughest critic on his son. I'd be like, Dad, man, Clay had a great game last night. And he'd go, yeah, I don't know, man. Sometimes I don't know about my kids. And I'm like, one of your kids is in the MLB and the other one's in the NBA. What are you talking about? Like, it, it was so funny. There was a rumor that I, I, I heard that Michael would find Clay when he would take contested threes back in the day oh shit and uh oh yeah it was it was wild it was it was wild to see but the warriors used to be such a fun team and i don't know right now like they put so much of their identity into like you know i, I hate reading that draymond is the heart of this team like well you got a bad heart bro like he's he's a liability to your team mm. but talking about the raptors i'm gonna butcher his last name what's Dar- I, their coach darko i don't know his last uh, name rakanovich um, or something yeah something yeah. yeah did you see his rant the other day yeah well, Ooh, someone got spicy yeah yeah it's true i was watching that game and being a lakers fan you know i was happy about it but it was it was hard to watch it was like dude really like this is like that was the closest thing to the refs being rigged that I've seen in a while, you know, and I'm not going to sit here and say it was, come on. There, yeah, okay. There were a couple bad calls. There were a couple bad calls. Dude. I, I give you that. Yeah. I mean, you telling me there weren't bad calls when Kobe was there. I knew referees. I, I know referees to this day and I will not name their names, but would tell me I'm so much harder on Kobe just because I want to be. What? And they would, they, yes, I know referees, I won't name their names, but they would always say, I hate working with Kobe. I look for everything he does wrong. I'm always going to call something on Kobe. So like, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Like, you know, it's just the way it goes sometimes. Wouldn't it be the exact opposite though? Because Kobe was a superstar. So you got to treat him with more respect and 
the, it, it, you know, you want him to be on the floor so they wouldn't want to foul him out or. No, it, Damn. It, it's kind of the same mentality of like, do amazing players become good coaches? No, they don't. And it's because a player like Kobe was always so hyper focused on what he was doing right then and there. And he had it planned out in his head that refs will look for a reason to kind of get under his skin because he would get under their skin. He would call them out when they'd make their mistakes. That was always a thing. Like people always used to ask me if I thought Kobe would be a good coach. Absolutely not. Because he has no understanding of why someone can't do what he does. When you have that level of greatness and you're like, I do this, I work this hard, and you look at someone and they're not working that hard, he would ream his teammates. Mm. To me, like, you know who, like, refs love playing, like, uh, refing is like a player like Shane Battier. <laughs> Shane Battier is a genius. Yeah. You know, you get that hand up in your face like that, but, like, he was also polite. He had, like, diplomacy. He could play out a scenario in his head. And, like, he was an easy guy to be around. Kobe's not an easy guy to be around. No. He fights for every play. And I don't know if you know much about this. Like, did Kobe know that, but still decide to just be the way he was? And he did not care. He didn't care, yeah. The Kobe Bryant I knew could give two whatevers. Like, he's like, I'm here to play. I have a job. This is my job. That man was so strict with his time management. And, like, when he was there checked in, he was checked in. And, um... I mean, it, it just goes to show you what kind of person he is. I mean, look, Rob Palenka, like to have that kind of like relationship with your agent is a huge deal, right? Mm. And Rob knew the kind of talent he was. And Rob was really good at like calming him at times. Um, but Kobe knew what he was doing. He was there for a reason. And that reason was to win. And if, you know, look how frustrated he got when he wouldn't win, you know, mm. like, and I hate when people say, like, oh, Kobe only won because he had Shaq. Well, Shaq only won because he had Kobe. Yeah, people don't realize that. It's so, like, that's such a... No, they don't. No. And, and to me, I love a player like Pau Gasol. Let me, let's, let's rewind the clock here for a second. Pau and Kobe had the greatest relationship ever as teammates. Mm. I mean, till this day, Pau is so active with the Bryant family. But, I, you know, I, I always felt bad for Pau because there was, like, a portion of time where his name was always on the chopping block. And like people always thought they're gonna trade him, they're gonna trade him, they're gonna trade him. And Kobe was the one saying, like, I don't want him to leave. But Pow never broke his cool. Pow was a gentleman. Mm. I, when that man came to the arena, he'd park his car. I've seen him help the cleaning ladies pick up bags and throw them in the dumpster. Like he was such a gentleman, remembered everyone's name. And then, you know, you had people like Lamar Odom, <laughs> who would hear the smallest rumor that he might be getting traded. And now tomorrow he's lost his damn mind. He's not playing efficiently. He's lax the days, but like how never did that. Yeah. How never did that. And it's, it's, be I feel like it's because he was so close to Kobe that, that, that kind of rubs off when you're around Kobe that rubbed off on you. Like it sounds dumb. Yeah. Yeah. Even me as just being like a sideline reporter, like when you were around him, you stood up a little straighter and you're like, I want to be good because this guy's good. This guy's on. Mm. I want to be on. That was just amazing to me. I, 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 it was just a different energy. Wow. In the league's not the same without him. It's not. No. Who's I mean, the next Kobe? I'll ask you. Who's the next Kobe? The, there's never even. Yeah, there's never gonna be like he was just an anomaly in every single way. I mean, I don't expect anyone to be like him anymore. I mean, I don't. I don't. I mean, there's definitely not going to be this i mean in the league right now i mean the closest the closest i don't know i don't even know maybe luca i love luca i love luca okay jokic jokic in a way with his professionalism coming into the arena with suits on i mean it's a business trip it's a job for him i mean staying off yeah. of social media staying to himself i mean that's the closest thing in that regard being Close to Kobe. To me, a Jokic is up there. I think Giannis. Giannis has a lot of potential. Um, I think he's extremely professional. And, he is. Oh, here we go. But there's just like this bit of corniness with players now, even. Like even with Jason. Giannis? A little bit. Like he's like his interviews. I, I I get it. Like he's had some good like media interviews about you know awareness and mindfulness and whatever fucking spirituality, and he's going down that path. It's great, but there's this 
it just seems like there's this bit of like i don't know like this um this phoniness that people the players are playing now it's like this they're they're only doing it just to go on their to just to promote their brand like Giannis is just doing that now to like you know promote his brand of being the really really woke and aware guy but also being ultra competitive right like he has that agenda mm-hmm. deep down in his mind I don't know if I'm reading too much into it but I also I, I don't know he's still kind of like corny even when jason tatum hit the game winner against minnesota and he was like mean mugging i'm like ew dude like you're not you're not no, like that, that was tacky yeah you no, know what i tacky. mean like you're not tacky. that guy yeah. yeah no i i i and look i i know people love tatum but again yeah you're not that guy no. i think like <laughs> i don't like his personality but i think booker's got a lot of talent i think booker i mean and plus he was a kobe fan so i like him immediately but um i mean i don't want to play against booker I, I, this, I, I wouldn't want to, yeah. um, but I don't think like when you talk to the corny level of it, like he's not someone who's super corny to me, you know, he kind of is like, I show up, I do my job, I leave, but there's really no one I see anymore with that same grit and that same, like, where are the Allen Iversons? Where are they? The, the closest know? thing God. right now for this generation is John Moran, which is so sad to me. It is sad. God, I I miss days where they, we had the malice in the palace and Ron Artest is losing his mind and kicking his legs up and attacking fans. Like, <laughs> like just, it used to be exciting. Just psychotic dudes that were just ready to go at any time. Like, I miss that shit. I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's better that it's going the direction of just being more... Soft? soft it's soft I, the word. yeah yeah that, yeah it is the word i mean i see it with like kids now nowadays when they're playing i mean but sports are changing i don't know if you saw california's trying to pass a bill um that takes away tackle football for kids oh wow i didn't see that yeah matt liner was talking about it the other day it's pretty wild i i, I mean and and like think about it like is that good is that bad who knows like we're knowing what we know now with CTE and injuries like it, it's tough it's almost like all sports are becoming a little softer right. I would say dude okay I need some help I don't know I, I need feel some like help. yeah talk to me I need some because I've been re- I've really been trying to get into football um mm-hmm. the past three or four years but I just can't like I don't have a team I don't okay. have a team at all I I go from one team to another first it was the Cowboys because mm. they have really hot cheerleaders. <laughs> That's <laughs> then, fair. And then, That's fair, they do. You know what I'm saying? Like, And then it, it went to the Bengals because in grade seven, I actually got a Chad Johnson jersey because I really liked his blonde mohawk. Oh. Yeah. Like that, that, like I remember watching that. He was like, blonde, huh? Yeah, dude. Like he was swaggy as hell. Like I remember seeing that in elementary. I'm like, wow, that guy's cool. I want to get his jersey. Cause I'm a big Jersey guy. So I just get a Jersey right away. I just, right. Uh, um, so I went to the Bengals and then I was a big Bengals fan because they beat the chiefs in the playoffs a few years ago and I had money on it. So I became a Joe Burrow fan. So I ordered his Jersey and then I got a Travis Kelsey Jersey because he has a podcast and he's actually kind of cool, but now hilarious. Yeah, he's uh, he's awesome, but he's kind of corny now with this whole Taylor Swift thing, which is fucking over the top. Um, so I don't have a team at all, and it's I I don't have a dad that was into football. Uh, no one in my family was into football. We don't really, I mean, we even in Vancouver, like we're I'm not even like in this where I'm from, like BC Lions, like CFL, like it's like childish compared to the NFL, and. Yeah, I just, um, I think football could be the most overrated thing ever. I get that. Listen, I get that. And and you know what I think would really help for the newbies is watching something like, especially this, okay, the Dolphins Hard Knocks that's on Netflix right now. It's perfection. To me, this Hard Knocks is better than any other Hard Knocks you've ever seen because you're seeing everything from a coaching standpoint, you're learning the coach's background and story, and then you're seeing the players and they're active. Like, it's up to date. Like, the last week's episode was them going into yesterday's game, which was a nightmare. But football, like, picking a team is tough, right? Everyone has a hard time. I have friends, you know, I have a friend, my best friend, Mike, who's like, I'm a Panthers fan. Mm. Okay, well, they're terrible, so 
crap. Uh, my brother just picked Ravens, you know, one year. And, and it's, it, it's hard, but like what I do is like, I, I mean, I've always been a Chargers fan. My dad was a Rams fan, but I was a Chargers fan from when they were in San Diego mm. um, because I loved LT. LaDainian Tomlinson was yes. a monster that. to me, the yeah. beast. And like Antonio Gates, and then like you know, I, I, I Drew Brees, who I wish we had never let go. But what, what can you do? The Chargers just make one bad decision after another. Our our saying should be hashtag maybe next year. Um, <laughs> but then they just it, fire it, the it, head coach. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah. goodness. Bye yeah. bye, Staley. Get out of here, <laughs> Mister. I can run the defense. Don't talk to me about it. You clearly can't run the defense, can you? Get out. Fuck. You know, but like people, I say this all the time. People are naive to think he's the only problem with the Chargers. You know, they, they got rid of him and the GM for good reason. And if anyone upstairs can hear me, I would love Harbaugh to be our next coach. Give me Harbaugh or Ron Rivera, who the commanders just let go. I would love those two. Keep Bill Belichick and those cut up sleeves away from me and my team. I will I will not be a Chargers fan if Bill Belichick. I do not want him. Why? He's done. He's the Send goat. him out to pasture. Stop. He's stop, 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 stop. Okay, here's the thing. The Belichick way works if everything is aligned for Belichick. Look at how many of his coaching staff went off to different teams and have done nothing. Yeah. because they keep going with the Belichick way. Whatever, dude, you got into Tom Brady's face, who, as much as I hate to say it, I don't like any team from Boston, by the way. I don't own any green clothing because I hate the Celtics. I don't like the Bruins. I hate <laughs> the Red Sox. And I do not like the Patriots. Uh-huh. And, you know, Tom Brady, I'm just going to say it, greatest quarterback of all time. That hurts me. It hurts me to say that. Mm. But he is. And, and you're going to pick a fight with him? So much so that he's going to leave and out of spite win a Super Bowl with another team. Uh, the era of Belichick is over. No one's afraid of the Patriots anymore. Bailey Zappi does not do it for me or anyone else. And I don't want him on my team. Right. I don't. Like, we're done. Just go away. W- go away. With that Belichick point, is it because he's so stuck in his old ways that he hasn't, he's too stubborn to evolve to the new game? Is that what it is? Like, I think what, so. Okay. Well, I, I think so because, like, look, look at the league every year. The league every year changes more and more and more to a passing league. People are throwing the ball. Wide rec- you, you got tight, two tight ends in formations now. You know what I mean? Like right. three wide receivers and two tight ends are going out here. It only becomes a running game in the playoffs. Okay. That's when you really see the running game come to life. Okay. And, and Belichick is just stuck in his old ways. Mm. Like, he, to me, he's just stuck. Like, he's done everything he could for the organization – Send him off with his flowers and let's just be done with it. But, you know, a team like the Chargers, I think they really, they're missing a coach that can rally the team. I don't think Belichick is that guy. I think Harbaugh is that guy. Mm. But I think Michigan is going to offer him a ton of money and um, it's going to be tough to get him. But I think Ron Rivera would be great because he's a great defensive and offensive coach, you know? I mean, as far as like the games like this weekend, I did not see that happening yesterday with the Dolphins. I didn't think the Dolphins were going to lose that bad. I, I mean, it was, I think, below negative in Kansas City. And of course, you know, the opening thing we see is Taylor coming in with her Travis Kelsey jacket. You know, I'm not a Taylor hater. I, I, it's not my type of music. I'm a little hardcore emo kid myself. You know, I don't know if you watched any of that game, but Andy Reid, arguably one of the greatest coaches of all time, his mustache had icicles in it. Like, it was cold. Yeah. And, but you know, you know who knows how to play in the cold is Bill Belichick. When you deflate that ball a little bit, it's a little easier to throw it. It's not so much throwing a hard rock anymore. But that, that game yesterday was heartbreaking to me. Today with the Packers and the Cowboys, I think the Cowboys will take it because the Cowboys don't lose at home. They play very well on their home field, but especially on turf. Look at the stats of the Cowboys playing on grass. They don't do so well. And, you know, J- Jordan Love is, he's still getting in his footing. The Packers still aren't a team to be worried about yet, you know, um, I love I love young quarterbacks like I love CJ Stroud. Yeah. The Texans beat the Browns. I didn't see that coming. By the way, by the way, sorry to interrupt you. Like you're no. you're throwing out a lot of names. I don't know much. I don't know who Harbaugh None is. Of it? I don't know I I th- <laughs> Rivera no <laughs> idea. No idea. Uh this CJ Stroud guy no idea. Um, that's what I'm saying, man. Like football, I'm so fucking far removed from football that it's just not, it's not appealing to me. It's just, we, it, okay. it's a weird sport. Like y- 
there's too many pauses, commercials, waiting around. Like, come on, man. Like, let's figure this out. And it's like, but okay. you got to get into the drama behind it. So, like, dude, and dude, the I thing I'll give you the I'll just give you the quickest thing. So okay. The Browns Texans game. The okay. Browns they lost their quarterback. They lost their star at the beginning of the first game of the year. You know, they're they're down and out. Who do they call? Hey, Joe Flacco, who's been sitting on his couch for I think it was two years eating bonbons. Get off your butt. Get out here. We want you to be our quarterback. He comes out and he starts playing amazingly. Okay. Mm. And then you got CJ Stroud, who is, uh, you know, went the drama with him was in the draft. This guy and Bryce Young, who plays for the Panthers, both amazing quarterbacks. But there's a cognitive test they give quarterbacks it's called the C2 cognitive test. And CJ Stroud scored one of the worst scores ever on it <laughs> so everybody who went from wanting cj stroud was like oh i don't know doesn't look like he's too bright he's now he's not going to go the number one pick in the draft but he kept his cool he kept his calm this guy's dad's been in prison half of his life can't sure. come watch his kids play but he's just kept his mellowness and been like i know people want to say what they want to say about me but i'm going to keep trying and as a rookie made it to the playoffs give me a mm. break and then won. they won they beat the Browns. The oh. Browns are a team without an identity. I don't know if their mascot is a dog or an elf, or I don't know what they're doing anymore. <laughs> but yeah. I'm just saying there's drama. You got to get into the drama. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. I get it. I mean, I don't know. What's the freaking show on Netflix with the uh, the Juco fucking Last Chance You? That was really good. Okay. With, with Jason. Oh, you like that? I love that. I mean, it was okay. it was amazing. I mean, it, but the, the, like the whole drama with Jason Brown and how he was, and that was that was amazing. That was so fun to watch. But just yeah, I don't know. I didn't even know. So it, the playoffs have started. Yes, oh, we're okay. it's wild card weekend. Okay. What is uh, is that? Okay, so that's a playoff fucking game. Yes. So okay. the wild card <laughs> are the teams that you know didn't get a buy. Okay. But their record was good enough, and now they're they're fighting to go in. Like you know, right. the Ravens get the week off, and the Niners get the week off. But these other teams all have to kind of fight to find their way in. Right. Um, and anything happens during playoff. Playoff football is insane, dude. I mean, look today. I think the odds are like twenty six percent the Packers would win. I know the Cowboys are going to win, but I hope it's an interesting game. Okay. I really do. I also don't love Dak Prescott. I don't love their quarterback, but I... C.D. Lamb. Is just insane right now. That's their wide receiver. Right. So yeah, yeah, I know. I know who CD Lamb is. I know who Dak is. Um, Dak is very hated. Hey. Yeah, I don't dig him. I've been. I'll, I'll put it to you this way. I've been in the same fantasy football league now for maybe twelve years. It's me and eleven dudes I went to high school with, and like every year I have an opportunity to pick up Dak, and I never do. Right. It's a keeper league too, and I'm like, get out of here. I don't want you. Like, I don't. I don't like him. Who's his NBA equivalent? Man, that's tough. Harden, maybe. You know, I'd like, say J- I mean James Harden is is doing great right now. Right. Yeah. Um, no, Clippers are scary. Don't get me. Like, listen, they'll never be LA's team. It's always still more expensive to go to a Laker game than a Clippers game. But yeah, I'd say James Harden. Just super but talented. But makes stupid mistakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's always I, that I moment. Mean, from what I've heard and what I've seen is like the clutch moments, like the mo- like the uh, the pl- the moment where he can take himself to the next level and really solidify himself as being like a elite elite quarterback he always fumbles that shit like he always fucks it up yeah (laughs) i mean look where's the kobe's in the nfl Mm. who's the guy that you say "Uh uh-oh you know they're down by a touchdown but there's a minute left they could still do it that was tom brady i mean if you gave tom brady 45 seconds down by a touchdown no no problem He's going to take care of that for you. Like, I, I was always worried about that, you know? Yeah. There's no one I'm really afraid of anymore when it comes to that. I think the Niners, I've said it from the beginning of the year, Niners, Ravens, Super Bowl. I think the Niners have the most complete team if they're healthy, you know, between Debo and Kittle. And it just, they, they, have, they have so many. Brock and CMC. CMC, to me, is the MVP. Christian McCaffrey is the MVP yeah, I know, this I know year. Him, yeah, yeah. You got to run... A, you know what I mean? You, you got a running back that can also play as a whiteout. Right. And he's a, he, I mean, he's a tasty dish too. He's a handsome guy. Yeah. I mean, he's a little peach. He reminds me of Frank <laughs> Gore. He's a little tank and he just runs, you know? I mm. mean, God love his personality. Kittle to me is like, I love tight ends in the NFL. Like ends, Kittle yeah. and Kelsey, they're fun. Right. They want to have fun. Oh, you dude, know? I'm going to, th- um, I'm going to throw you a name. I'm going to throw you a name, a tight end that was on the Giants. I loved his last name. Jeremy Shockey. Oh, 
Jeremy. Yeah, dude, I used to pick him up. Yeah. I loved him. Yeah, yeah. No, I, dude, I. He was great. I just loved his last name. It was a fucking cool last name. Shocky. Cool. Yeah. He was I, a good. He was a good tight end too. Um, Kincaid is also another good one right now. Like, I, I, I gosh, if I could play football, I'd want to be a tight end. I, I or a corner. But tight ends are just they're fun. They get a lot of like you know I don't know, but I'm, I'm telling you, you find the drama in any sport. And, and you'll love it. That's why, like, hockey to me is so, like, untapped. Like, mm. I love that there's drama. Let them fight. Let them chirp. Mm -hmm. Let's throw the gloves off and get into it, you know? But you can't really do that in the NFL or the NBA. Right. And when you do, you're immediately fined for it. And, like, anytime, like, I've tried to explain sports to people, they just, I, I try to explain the hockey thing. And they're like, but why are they allowed to fight? I'm like, I don't know, but they are. Yeah, I don't and know. <laughs> Isn't that crazy how they're actually allowed to just fucking do get out like completely go at each other i mean just and, and then there's like levels of fighting though you know what i mean like let's just get into it and punch each other a little bit if the gloves are off you're like uh oh this is gonna get bad and then you can watch the like players like going to the penalty boxes and like chirping at each other i used to love to sit right by the penalty box at ducks game because you would hear the chirping and you're like oh god these, this guy's gonna come out of here and just lose it like and it was so much fun when we actually had like and, and, and hockey oh, players God, have that like top tier chirping where they really like say some like offside shit that like gets under your skin. You know what I mean? And it's so funny. It, it, their, their chirping is so good. I don't know if um recently there was a, a clip released of Crosby chirping at, um oh gosh, uh, I'm forgetting. I think it was Garner Menchu. Okay. And, he just kept knocking him down and he kept going, little ass boy, little ass boy. Damn, Crosby. And at one point, I, I, yeah, and I think it was Minshew. And they, they like go to him and they just shoot him for a second. And Minshew's like, Max Crosby is so angry. Why is he so angry all the time? And you're just like laughing at it. You're like, oh my gosh, that's like a lot for you. When you hear hockey players chirp, like they get into it. Mm -hmm. Like, relax, NFL. This is the NFL. Like, Go go play an NHL game. You yeah, know? literally, like, literally, some hockey players like their role on the team is to chirp and be a goon and really enforcer start shit. Yeah, I mean that's like they make money and make make rosters because of that. Just to be a this a D. I mean, I miss Delorier. <laughs> Delorier was our enforcer on the Anaheim Ducks, and when we got rid of him, it bummed me out. I, I don't know if you've ever heard of a brand called uh, a clothing brand called Violent Gentlemen. No, um, uh, they're a big hockey lifestyle brand. Check them out. They're based here in Orange County. Um, two of uh, my very good friend Hammer, Mike Hammer, is the one who started the brand. And it's a lifestyle brand for hockey, but Violent Gentleman is the name. And it's such a cool disposition if you think about it. You're like, huh, that's kind of what these enforcers are. Their, their first player to get on board was George Peros, who is literally the definition of a violent gentleman. Like an enforcer, but very polite, very nice. Like that's the thing about hockey players. Like, they're not thuggish about it. Like no. they do what they need to do. And then they kind of get back into their like polite ways. And it, it's such an interesting uh, thing with hockey. And you don't really see that in other sports. Yeah, it's just I, part I, of the, I wish it's just a part of the job description to just go and do that. And then completely leave it behind and even say, what's up to the other guy after. Yeah. yeah. I want you to download our football is sexy app because I will help you here. Um, we have a dictionary on there. That's like layman's terms. Okay. Which if you don't know and you're learning football, you can be like, what's encroachment? I don't know. Go to the app and, you know, we've let tied it out for you. We have breaking news so you'll stay up to date with the drama. Okay. Our podcast is on there as well. But I tell everybody who's learning sports, like, no joke. Like, the app is so easy and, like, you learn a lot from it. Like, my brother's girlfriend is like, I'm trying to learn more about the Ravens. She'll use our app and she gets kind of more excited. And we have, like, fun things on there like pick -ums and, like, little games but it, okay. it's sick and like it'll help you learn football in a very non-confrontational way because i hate when people are trying to get into a sport and like there are these people who have the stigma of like oh you're not a fan oh you don't know anything dude somebody wrote a comment on one of my videos to, i think yesterday like get back in the kitchen stop what you're doing and i'm like bro i love the kitchen i love to eat mm. i'm in the kitchen brother like yeah, yeah but like that kind of negativity is like what should be gone with any sport i love that you're coming on here yeah. telling me i don't know yeah and trust me i, I don't know. i've really been trying like i want to i want to pick a team right now i don't know i just should i just go based off color should i just go based off of yeah like their favorite like they're a player you like there's got to be a player you like oh my god i don't know uh if I, I was gonna pick a team and i wasn't a chargers fan 
I really I want my team to be the Dolphins. Okay, yeah. So the reason why I would be, I love the colors of uh, the Chargers, like the baby blue and the yellow. Like I love mm. those colors. Beautiful. Right? Can I like? Can I just? Is it? Is it? Is it? You know. Is it legit for me to just like a team just based off of their colors? Because uh, that's all. Dude, really like that's going to be your starting point. Okay. You're picking something that you already like have a liking towards. Mm. Sure. Pick it and then follow the drama of like the league. Like Herbert is an amazing quarterback. We wasted a year of him this year. It sucks. Mm. And uh, he's such a stand up guy too. You like, you want him to do well. Mm. Justin Herbert, man, out of Oregon, like, Ah, it sucks. It's, I, I get so aggravated. But yeah, pick a team based on the colors and then watch it and you kind of get a connection to them. That's, again, like, I feel like I'm repping Hard Knocks right now. That's the beauty of shows like Hard Knocks. When you watch a team and you kind of, like, learn more about them and you learn more about these players' lives, like, Tua is a great quarterback. He's Miami's quarterback. Such a stand-up guy. Like, oh, my goodness, listen to him talk. You want him to win. You want him to do good. Mm. Um, and, and you get you like their coach. I, the, Miami's coach to me is one of the greatest stories ever. He's awesome. Oh, yeah, that guy's we don't cool. have people like him. Dude, mm. you know, like above his desk, he has a postcard that says 858 or 856. And that's the number of days he was exiled from the NFL. Like this guy oh, wow. started at the bottom being a coach, working his way up, crawling and scratching, then started having a drinking problem and couldn't get a job. And then once he finds his way onto a team, like the team rallied around him. And it, it's such a beautiful story. The te- the, all the coaching staff was like, hey, we're going to call your wife in here and you're going to tell your wife you have a drinking problem in front of all of us. And he did. And he said, once I looked at my wife's face and told her like, how bad my drinking had become. He's like, I never wanted to drink again. And he's been sober since. Mm. And he's got swag on him. He's wearing off white on the field. And like the players don't know what that is. Like I tr- t- I'm telling you, pick a team for any reason. You'll fall for them. And just don't let it be the Patriots. Uh, There's sense. no point. Hey, yeah. You no, know, that makes sense. It's just, oh, fuck, I need to get into it. I, I, I'm only really into it when I'm betting on it. I have money on it. That's when I'm like, you know, just full on, like, okay, like, oh. like when Joe Burrow, like when the Bengals beat the fucking uh, the Chiefs that year, I was like, okay, I'm a Bengals fan. I mean, you made me a lot of money. So, Joe Burrow. I think this is a good segue to also talk more about football is sexy for those that don't know yeah. what you guys do. And you mentioned the app. And actually, I'm going to download this because I don't, uh, I didn't say this before we started, but I, I don't watch any sports. I never grew up with sports. <laughs> okay. My family doesn't watch sports. I hated playing sports. They forced me when I was a kid to play soccer for a year. I was terrible. I was an embarrassment. We'll never do that again. But anyways, my biggest issue is that like kind of like Mo trying to learn a different sport. I know he's a basketball fan fan but i never know where to start because you know they're mentioning plays and things i I don't understand the technology i don't know who the players are so i think this app is also going to help me if i wanted to actually learn uh, or how to get into football for example that's always the biggest issue i think trying to like how do you how do you get into a sport how do you learn about it right other than playing it yeah and, and i love that you 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 get that right like how do you start and like a lot of people don't like sports and that's okay and it's finding that connection to a team. It's finding like the same visceral reaction you get when Mo talks about the Lakers. You know, it's like, it's something in you. And if you have to start by being like, I'm just going to pick a team because I like the colors, go ahead. The point of, you know, the mission of Football is Sexy is be a fan to whatever extent you want. There is no prize for calling yourself the biggest fan. We, we, we're done with that. That day is over. You know, you don't know something, that's okay. Hey, there is a world and a place where like you got 900 other things on your head and you don't remember what bone someone broke. Like earlier, I said ankle and it was his jaw, like with, with Bedard. Like that doesn't make you any less of a fan. Like I, I hate meeting people who know every stat off their head. I'm always like, bro, do you have a job? Mm. Like what, do you have a family? Why do you know so much? Mm. But that's what we're trying to promote. Is, and you know what? Honestly, our demographic is, I think it's like 65% male. And the app is 65% male downloaded. Mm. And it's interesting because we're providing a safe place to learn in a non-judgmental way, which I think is the hardest part about getting into sports. Like, you know, and like you said, if you're not betting, like what's your attachment to it? Um, We also have a new program with ambassadors and we got a huge response from people all over the U S like, I want to be an ambassador for the Browns. I want to be an ambassador. Like, it was insane. Like when we started this, you know, I've worked in sports a long time and 
working in sports a long time, I can tell you it's gotten easier. And I hate playing the card. It's harder for women than it is men. But I don't have a, like, I have some bad stories. I have some horror stories. I have some bad things that have happened to me working with certain athletes and organizations. And, and when this opportunity came up for me and I was told by Monica, who who's our CEO and president, this is a safe place. We're always going to look out for you. We're creating an environment where that's comfortable for everybody to learn and, and be themselves. And we won't tolerate certain things. That's what sold me on it. And I, I bought into her vision. And, and it's you, gotten so cool. And do you have a uh, do you have a mission statement? Like, how would you explain it in in fifteen seconds to somebody that doesn't know what football is sexy does? And also tell us more about your role there too. Yeah, uh, you know, we're teaching football, teaching football to whoever wants to learn it, and that's that's our mission, dude. And and you know, my role there is all three of us have different personalities. Melissa's kind of our pop culture girl, and Monica's our diehard Niner fan. She's good with stats, and then I'm kind of that spicy one who doesn't care. And, I'll say what I want to say. And sometimes I have to be a little careful of that um, because I don't want to offend people. But like, it, it, it's an amazing opportunity. Like we had Joe Davis on the other day, who Joe Davis, as many people know, is the voice of the Dodgers taking over for Vin Scully, arguably one of the greatest announcers of all time. Next to Chick Hearn, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll never mind that. But Joe is also an NFL uh, announcer. And, and, you know, talking to him about baseball and football and like, I'm going into it with him because I'm like dogging the contract, the Dodgers contract. And like, you know, every once in a while, someone will look at me like, Sinaj. and I'm like, no, I'm not going to shush. I'm going to say what I want to say and it's going to be okay. And, um, it's been great because of that. Like with football is sexy. Now we have an app obviously, but then our podcasts are great. And another thing we've gotten so much reaching out for are our get togethers. We held a draft party and we shoot out of the Ice House, which is America's oldest comedy club, legendary. Johnny Buss, owner of the Lakers, buys it, brings it back to life. And it is just our home now. And we are so honored to be there. But we had our draft party there and it's sold out. Like people want to come and watch. And we had so many people reaching out to us for a Super Bowl party that we were like, okay, we'll do it. Mm. So we have a Super Bowl party and and we're going to. It's already like, I think it's like 75% sold out right now. We've got Adidas on board. We have Dime Industries on board. These people who believe in what Football is Sexy is doing is providing a safe space. And what our hope is, is to one day have that activation and that corner at every, you know, arena in, in the NFL. Like, here's a Football is Sexy meetup. You know, how many times, I, you guys don't, you know, you don't go to a lot of football games, but like when I was younger and I'd go with my friends when I was becoming a Chargers fan, you're tailgating, right? Mm. But there's not really a place you can go where you're like, I don't know everything. Is there kind of a place where I can go and be mellow and hang out with people? And like, yeah, we want to have an activation and a setup for that. Like, come here, come right. meet the rest of the squad. No, this and and that's what's important to us. Right. No, that's really cool because personally, I don't feel this way. Like, I don't really um, feel that pressure. But I feel like for a lot of guys, because it is such a mainstream thing to be with the boys and be in a group chat and being part of fantasy league. And if you're not a part of that, that's a big part of like a social event that you're not going to be a part of like Sunday football meetups and the super Bowl, super Bowl parties, you might not get invited because you, you're not, you're not a fan of football. You don't know much about it. So I feel like a lot, I don't personally feel this way, but like, I feel like a lot of guys would feel that pressure to be like, okay, fuck, I need to learn at least something about football or know who's who or like some sort of, of the rules. So I can like fit in it, fit in at times because, um, I think, yeah, I mean, that's a big, it's like very mean. Yeah, dude. And but dudes. how daunting is that? Yeah. It's like scary. And you don't want to open your mouth and say something and be wrong and be judged. You know what I mean? Like, mm. I, like, look, dude, I jaw jack with the best of them. I, I, but like some days, like certain Charger games, certain Laker games, I'm like I'm watching from home. I can't, I, I'm not going down to lamppost and watching around people. There's certain days I can't do it. But like at the end of that, like just look at each other and be like, that was a great game, man. Like, but it's hard. I feel for men, it's almost tougher. Mm. My kid brother learning football these past few years, like he was always nervous. He was nervous to ask a question. He was nervous to not sound like there's like a level of masculinity attached to sports. Right. And it's hard for guys. And that's why this app so easy. It dumbs it down. It explains it in a way that like, look, dude, if you Google right now, what is encroachment, you can read it five times and you still won't get it. Mm. Like it, that's just the way it is. And, and we want to create an environment that's like, come be a part of something. Sports is something that brings people together. Like, I don't care what your religion is. I don't care what your race is. I don't care anything. 
you happen to be a Chargers fan and you're wearing a Chargers jersey, guess what? We are family today. Mm. And that's what I love about sports, especially in today's world, dude, when things are just messy. Everybody be kind. Pick a team. I don't care what it is, as long as it's not a Boston team. And uh, <laughs> you will, you can find a friend. You know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. I love that you guys are so open to that. And you're admitting, like, I don't know this. I don't. Yeah. But that's cool. And you what's can the learn it. what's the premise of the podcast? What are you what are you talking about? Is is it more of what you're doing for the organization, or is it are you talking about about? Uh, oh, we're games talking. We're what? recapping games. Okay. We're recapping games, and uh, we we generally shoot on Tuesdays because we wait till the Monday night game to be over, and and we give our recap on games and kind of like on what happened the week. Like you know, if something stands out to me, I love to spend fifteen minutes arguing about it. Like there was a week. Where and I shouldn't even say a week. There was a time period where no one on the Chargers could grab a ball, and I decided to rip into the offense and was just like, "Throw me a ball and watch me catch it." You know, like I, I, we argue about what happens oh, yeah. during the week, and it, it's so funny because sometimes we don't agree with each other. And then you know, like I said, Melissa will bring up the Taylor Swift stuff, and I just sit there and I'm like, "I do not know, and I do not care." Hmm. but it's now a part of the NFL and I have to care. Um, and we bring our opinions into it. We break down plays sometimes. We, it, it, it's, it's whatever we feel like saying. There were weeks where I was going so hard on Stan, like Staley, like our coach for the Chargers, where I'm surprised I didn't get a cease and desist. Hmm. And uh, <laughs> that's just how it is. And we, we, we talk anything. And, you know, sometimes people will send in questions and Sometimes we have interviews and with our interviews, we like to hear like how you became a fan. Why are you a fan? And dude, you'll be surprised. People will say like, I just like the colors. Nice. And that's how I started okay. 10 years ago. Okay. I didn't, I never thought that was a good enough reason to be a fan, but apparently. Yeah. So, okay. Everybody looks good in baby blue, Mo. Yeah. Come to the Chargers side of things. No, Listen, like last year, the Detroit Lions were the worst team in the NFL. They were terrible. That's why they got that, you know, you, and the worse you are, the better draft pick you get. Right. Look at them this year. Anything can change. So my Chargers are going to be, I, I have faith in my Chargers for next year. Speaking of the Lions, I would not mind being a fan of the Lions because of the color. And I love the coach. The coach is a beauty. Absolutely. Campbell? He's amazing. Yeah, that guy's a G. I love that guy. Yeah, yeah. Dude, he is such a good coach. And, and this game is going to be spicy because, you know, it's, I make this joke all the time that like um, Goff and Stafford are almost the same person to me, right? I'm like, I don't know. You guys are just the same. But, you know, Goff has got a chip on his shoulder because the Rams kicked him to the curb. Oh, yeah. You know, like that didn't that oh, didn't right. make him feel so good. And then Stafford's got a chip with the Lions. So this game, it's like two quarterbacks, very similar styles, are going up against each other, but hatred towards the other team and the organization. Okay. And the Lions are like a – like an awesome story. Campbell's such a good coach. He is such a good coach. And then, you know, you got St. Brown on the Lions. You got Montgomery on the, and, and, and you, there's this fire in Detroit. I mean, goodness knows Detroit needs something. That's a rough city. You know what I oh, mean? Dude. Like, you, you, good, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Pist- I just, yeah, you know. it's, I love Cade though. The Cade. Pistons. K- yeah, I mean, Cade Cunningham is like legit, I think. Yeah? Yeah, okay. I, I love him. Okay, I, um, you know, I just feel like, even the Red Wings, right? Like it's it's a tough town, and Detroit needs something. So let's bring Eminem out, you know, yeah. sing a little bit for me, and get your team going. For sure. How many penalties are there in football? Like I, yeah, I was actually thinking about that because the other I watched one game, and one of the fucking flags was like two, like the it was um like the lineman like ran too far ahead. I didn't know that was a thing. Like uh, like, like a false start? No, no, no. Um, like you know how they're blocking and like they they like, they can't move a certain like a legal man down the field. Like it was okay, like a shift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's so many, dude. Like I couldn't even tell you. Like it must be awful to be an NFL ref because there's so many penalties, right? And like with any game, like I don't know what you think, but to me, like in a basketball game, you want to win a basketball game? There's an easy way to do it limit turnovers and that's it mm. to me that's how you win a basketball game right and it's kind of the same in the nfl like penalties will kill you like dumb penalties like you'll go from being like you know 10 and 10 and fourth like imagine that you're, mm. it's your fourth down you got 10 yards to go that team screws up even a little bit all of a sudden it's a first down again new game mm. game went from you losing to you could come through and win and and penalties are what kill teams so limiting penalty limiting penalties is a huge deal 
in the NFL. I think it's probably the biggest deal in the NFL. And it's even more so than any other sport. Because like I said, you can go from being in a fourth down, you're about to lose position to a whole new ball game. Yeah. I you're back like, to I first. feel like there could be and, a penalty on every play, though. It's just what the refs decide to see and what they don't want to see. And they could be holding. They yeah. could be a fucking face mask. They could be uh, uh, Dude, pass interference. The holding basically. calls... Yeah, I mean, PI like, yeah. PI is the most frustrating one to me. Yeah, I mean, uh, it drives. But remember, there's offensive pass interference and there's defensive pass interference. Yeah, I didn't. That, know that call actually. goes both ways. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you, that'll go both ways. Right. You can't like you can't grab someone anymore. Like horse collaring used to be a huge one. Like you know, right now they're trying to like argue like the the hip butt tackle or the tush put. Like there's so many things they're arguing right now. But like last night in that Kansas City Dolphins game. Some of those holding calls to me were not really holding calls. Right. And um, that's when you see, like, where where is the authorization, I like to say, for those? Like, in, in hockey, they call, you know, Canada. We got to go. We got to call Canada first, and then we'll confirm something, and then the call is confirmed. There really isn't too much of that mm. in the N- NFL. And penalties are what will kill you. And like I said, there's so many different penalties. There's it's, it's a stupid, I don't even know them all. It's just, yeah. Sometimes something will happen and you're like, wait, what? That I, I don't know what that one is. Right. You know, and the rules change, like overtime rules change. And like, it, it's interesting. No, I mean, I'm very open. I just, yeah, I really just need to buckle down on one team and just really commit to it. Cause I keep going back and forth and I just got to pick a team. I really do. Yeah. And then, you know what? Pick, pick a team. I'll, I'll just, Listen, pick a state you like. You know what I mean? And go from there. Okay. So it's just don't pick. I would I just, stay away from the Jets, too, as well. I'd yeah, stay away. Aaron no, is a little. I don't really like green, the color green. So, I mean. No, it's disgusting. Yeah, and again, really Celtic color. And Aaron Rodgers, to me, is kind of a nutcase. So. Oh, he's a G. Though. Uh, see, Aaron. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's like a kind of a psychopath. So I kind of like that. Kind of? Yeah. He's. I mean, when Pat McAfee has to say, "Okay, we've had enough," but then Pat brought him back on, which I thought was weird. Look, I don't know anybody who tears their Achilles and then says, "I could play the same season." Dog, love that. I don't know what ketamine or ayahuasca or mushroom therapy he is doing. Yeah, but that to me is wild. Yeah, you know, like I, I don't know when when Kobe hurt himself. Like God knows, I thought that guy could come back from whatever, but. Between Jalen Rose and everyone else hurting him, like you know, I, but but whatever, dude. Like Aaron to me is just kind of a net case. I I think he's too old, and they're putting too much like hope into him. And um, dude, like there's drama even with I, I'm blanking out on his name right now. The backup quarterback to the Jets. There was drama with him from BYU. Like I'm telling you, pick a team, find the drama. You're in. Okay. You know, so like, biggest thing. Tyreek Hill and- said his. Tyreek Hill's kid set his house on fire the other day. With with nice. injuries too, there's a lot of stem cell therapy that where people are seeing really fast recovery. So I'm sure I'm sure that there's a lot of that going on too. I mean, he's got the money. Good to for get him. That done, yeah. yeah, good for him. I don't like him. Great. <laughs> I don't like J E T S Jets Jets Jets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like there's just certain teams I don't like. Eagles too. Stay away from them. Oh yeah, I mean, though, I, would you say the three biggest cult fan bases in NFL are 49ers, Eagles, and Cowboys? Because that's kind of the that's kind of the Cowboys thing. is one. Yeah, Cowboys. Packers is another. Packers, really? Okay. The thing about the Packers that is interesting is the the city owns the team. I don't know if you know that their stadium is in the middle of a regular housing area. Oh wow! It's it, it's it's in the yeah. If you ever get to go to Green Bay. Their stadium is in the middle of just a regular neighborhood, and the city owns them. Right. They, they, they are owned by the people. That is why the Cheeseheads are such a – I mean, to me, Packers, Cowboys, and it's hard to pick that last one. Not 49ers? I feel like that – I'd say 49ers or Eagles, if I had to pick three, it would be one of them. Right, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, 49ers, mm, a lot of people jump onto theirs, you know. Um, Eagles, I think Philly fans just need something to root for, you know? Right. Flyers and the 76ers aren't doing it. So, but I, again, I, I would definitely say the top two would be the Cowboys and the Packers. Those fans are Packers, die hard. Really? Players. Okay. I didn't, oh I was expecting Packers. I thought it was Eagles, yeah. Gow, Cowboys, and then 49ers. And then, ooh. I think Cowboys have been like, what, America's team for yeah, so long? Like, they're the equivalent. Everyone, 
uh, to the Lakers. Yeah. Yeah, they like the are. Same, Fun fact yeah. about the Cowboys that I bet you don't know is uh, Dr. Buss, mm-hmm. you know, rest in peace, actually was going to buy the Cowboys. And his name was in there. He was about to buy the Cowboys, but he wasn't received well because everyone was like, this is a basketball guy. Why would we want a basketball guy buying the Dallas Cowboys? And the rumor is Jerry Jones got called in and they told Jerry, offer a little more money and we'll give it to you. And that's how Jerry Jones ended up with the team. But the Cowboys could have been owned by the Lakers. The more you know, guys. I mean, damn, I makes sense. It's like the, the, the equivalence of hate that the Lakers get from people that I know in the basketball community, like, oh, fuck the Lakers is the same hate that I'm assuming the Cowboys get. Like, oh, because I have buddies that are like, fuck the Cowboys. I just, they don't, they just don't like the Cowboys. Like, fuck off. Yeah, I get it because they're like a homer team. Like, it's yeah. like the people who don't know, like, the Yankees, like, like what you're saying right now. That's why I like that you're like, I'm going to pick a team based off colors. Yeah. Don't be the people that are like, oh, I'm going to pick a team because everybody seems to like. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please do not. I, I kind of like, went down do that, that route for a bit. And the fact that LeBron's favorite team was the Cowboys. So I was like, okay, like, I, 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 I kind of like LeBron. He likes the Cowboys. Sure, I'll go with the Yeah, I need a uh, football, man. Fuck sakes. I, need a, I just never played it. I never, like, B, we have BC Lions here. Like, we not, we're not a fucking, yeah. fo- we're not a football country. Country. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, I'm going to say a couple things and then we'll, uh, we'll end this because I, you actually have to go Connor Bedard next great thing or not because I he, yeah, North Van absolutely. he literally grew up like 10 minutes away from me it's pretty cool I think that's awesome between him and McDavid yeah 100 percent. I don't know which one will end up being the next Gretzky but it's between the two of them <gasps> and again I'm very upset he is not on our team but uh, I hope he heals quickly because the Blackhawks need him. And he was having a really good season, right? Like that was. Yeah. He was. Yeah. Oh my gosh. He was doing great, dude. But like, listen, don't sleep on our guys. Trevor Zegris is amazing. And I know he's injured right now, but like, don't sleep on our guys too. But Bedard and McDavid to me, it's, it's between the two of them to be the next Gretzky. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy. And I, I don't know if I you know, know this. Um, the projected number one pick for the NHL draft next year is also again from North Van next year. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah we who is pre- it? Uh, fuck, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I forgot his name. It's okay, but I know, I know. Uh, but he's from your town. He is. Yeah, we produce for some reason. North Van is like producing like top notch. We're very hockey oriented um, city. But last thing, Wemby Victor Wembanyama, overrated or not? I'll tell you. TBD. Uh, okay. I think he's so over. TBD. I think That's my most PC answer. Okay. Yeah. Why? Let's hear your thoughts. I, I just think he's very over it. I think he's um, he's going to be an elite defender. Um, I mean, there's no way he can't be. He's very mobile. He's very athletic for being 7'5". But in terms of just being an offensive threat, I think he's going to max out of being averaging 22 a game. Um I don't think he's going to be I don't think he's going to be a first option offensively on an NBA team um and I think you just can't be that big and be able to move any faster than he is right now. I mean, he's going to get stronger and with that if anything, he's going to get slower from that. His jumper's okay. Yeah. It's a little awkward. I don't know what it is. I think he has like a weird hitch in his shot. And I think for like what you said about how Bill Belichick is, he's outdated. I think there's not enough talk about how Greg Popovich is outdated and how he is overrated as a coach. Okay. See, I like Pop, but okay. You know, the thing about the tall boys, like, so that's what everyone thinks, right? Oh, this guy's tall. He should be in the NBA. We had a kid at uh, UC Irvine named Mamadou Njai and Mamadou was tall. Mm. And I mean, but he was slow. And the taller you are, the more your joints hurt, the more injury prone you are, the harder you fall. And with these big guys, being mobile is hard. Mm. And and when they get hurt, I mean, remember Greg Oden? <laughs> yeah, fuck. I mean, I mean, I mean, I had his jersey. That guy, you know that. <laughs> dude, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I I'm know. so sorry. I got his jersey. Greg Oden, like, you sneezed on him, and he was like, "Oh, he's out for three weeks." Yeah. You know, like being big, big tree fall hard. And I I don't know. I think Pop is such a good coach. He has his own ways. 
let's see if he can mold this guy. But there's only so much you can do because talent and athleticism are two different things. Right. And you can have the talent, but if athletically your body can't keep up, I don't know. And being a tall guy like that it is hard. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, we'll he's, he's, got, I, he's TBD to me. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say he doesn't have talent. He has a, the most talent in the world. But, I mean, mm -hmm. he's not posting me up. I'm telling you that much. He's not bodying me. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, he's a fucking I get kid, that. You know? So... Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I just don't like the hype around it now, too. It's just so much, like, it's in your face with Wemby. Like, dude, relax. Please, God. They got NBA's got to find a face right now. Mm. Who's the face if not LeBron? And not John Moran, not Zion. Like, those guys fell off. It was supposed to be those dumb. guys. And Zion went nuts, man. Yeah, he Zion. Went I, you know what? Yeah, Zion ain't it for me. I'm sorry. You're not it for me. Ja, not it for me either. I, I, I don't, I think he buckled. And unfortunately, like I said, like not the biggest LeBron fan, but he's he's the face right now. You wait for the circus act when Bronny cuts out and plays in the NBA. You wait for that act. Oh God! Because LeBron already said, "I'll play anyone. I'll play anywhere that takes my son." Oh God! Just I cannot wait for USC to dump that kid off. <laughs> Whatever, but yeah. <laughs> we'll see. I that that's a difference because I think Bronny is also very overrated. I watch him play. He is overrated. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. He is yeah. overrated, very, but you know, very. I mean, like, not even. It's hard when your dad is LeBron James. Yeah. Hey, man, this is this has been good. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for this, and we're gonna down. I'm gonna download your app because I need to learn. Thank I don't, you. I was thinking you kept saying encroachment. I really don't know what that is. Still, look it up. I'm not even gonna tell you. You're not gonna tell me. Yeah, yeah I want to learn up. my own. I need to learn on my own. But uh, I appreciate you coming on. This is this is awesome. Thank this you. is amazing for me. Thank you guys for having me. You two are awesome. I love your podcast. Oh, it is so you. fresh and raw. No, you guys keep it raw. I love that. Before we end this, like last thing, I swear to God, how did you get in touch with the fighter and the kid? And what's your role on that show? Because that's super cool. I mean, I've been following that show for a bit now and big fan yeah. of Brian, Brendan, Chris D'Elia, all those guys, Theo. I mean, that whole community, that whole space. So like how they have a great community. Yeah. Those guys, they crack me up. Um, so fighter and the kid, actually that journey started a long time ago. Uh, there was a time where they were going to have a show on Fox and I got reached out by an executive at Fox saying, Hey, I want you to come out here and interview for this show. Uh, it's based off a podcast called the fighter and the kid. They're looking for a third who kind of can like talk shit and mm. be around dudes and knows sports. So I went out there and I interviewed and they're like, dude, we love you. You're in. It's done. So we, I was really excited. Um, the show ended up never coming to fruition. So that kind of sucked. Um, but I've always listened to them. I, I like their podcast. It's a pretty male-dominated podcast, but I like it. Brian's hilarious. Brendan, the transition from MMA to comedy has been so great for him. Mm -hmm. I, I think he's really funny. Brendan and I just kind of uh, knew each other. We swam in the same circles and then one day just started messaging each other about work and stuff. And he was like, Hey, like, I remember you. I remember your name. I think you were supposed to work with us. And I was like, yeah, I was, I, I was. And he said, why don't you come out and let's give it a shot. And I came out there and I kind of work as I like to say the color commentary on okay. there, kind of yeah, like yeah. an Alex. Right. Um, my role isn't as big as there as it is as football is sexy, but I, I love that because that's, that's not that show's demographic is, is me, you mm. know? Um, but being kind of the color girl on the side and like bringing I bring a lot of current events to the table and I, I love to lob things up to kind of aggravate the two of them. And like, you know, Brian and Brendan have been together so long. They're like an old married couple right. and um, they agree on so many things, but there's some things they don't. So I love to find spicy current events to kind of get them to kind of activate, you know, like right. the Aaron Rodgers and um, Aaron Rodgers calling out Jimmy Kimmel thing. I don't know if you heard about that. No, I Aaron Rodgers basically went on the well. Aaron Rodgers basically went on the Pat McAfee show, and him and Jimmy Kimmel have had problems before. Jimmy's thrown some jabs at him. Oh, and then Aaron Aaron said something about like, well, when the Epstein list comes out, you know, oh. Jimmy Kimmel's going to be a little worried. Wow, Jimmy's going to be a little worried, dude. Oh, you shit. are insinuating Damn. that Jimmy Kimmel is on the Epstein list, <laughs> and Jimmy came back and was like, "Hey, watch your mouth." These words are getting death threats sent to me and my family. I have nothing to do with that list. Don't go there. <laughs> but then Aaron Rodgers came back and went, oh, no, 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 no. I wasn't insinuating he was on it. I was just saying he would be worried because I would be right about my conspiracy theories, which is what took Pat McAfee to be like, yeah, you know what? 
Um, we are not going to have Aaron Rodgers on our Tuesdays anymore because I don't want to be mentioned with this stuff anymore, which is a big deal because when Pat came out, he paid Aaron Rodgers and Nick Saban a pretty big amount of money to be like reoccurring guests on the show. But I loved bringing that up because Brendan and Aaron are so close. And Brendan's like, no, that's not what Aaron was saying. But then Brian's like, I kind of think that is like what he's saying. So right. it, it's just great. And the the two are such they're, they're awesome. Yeah, they stand up guys. I, I I love their show. They yeah. work hard. They do, and they find ways to make it work. And right. um, you know, Golden Hour is another great one. Um, you know, the Shab Show is great. I love and the Shab Show. It, I I yeah. actually got more into UFC after watching that show. I watch it every week now. Just the updates, the picks he has, the whole drama behind. I love UFC drama about it. I love. Don't it. miss the next. A fight companion. The next fight companion is going to be good. Duplacy and uh, Strickland. Yeah. Oh my gosh! First off, Strickland's gonna break down Dupli. I no! hope he does. Yeah, dude, yeah, I like DDP, DDP. He's kind of a like a oh, sat. He's no, 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 no. I love Strickland too. Don't get me wrong. Like I love who he is as a person and like his fighting style. But like DDP is also kind of like a renegade. He just goes for it. <laughs> I mean, we'll we'll see, right? But I'm telling you, tune into Fight Companion. Um, they have Joey Diaz on with Rogan. It's yep. going I mean, Joey Diaz. It's yeah. just it's gonna be insane. And I think this UFC is gonna be great. Um, I again, I'm a Strickland girl. I love his story. I also think when it comes to trash talking, there's certain things you don't say. Right. Um, but I think Duplice has just crossed too many lines. And has he? You know, what has he said? He hasn't said anything. Do places about like Izzy and people's dads and stuff, dude. No, dude, that's that's Colby Covington. Colby did that too, but Do has said some stuff. No, he did. He's never said anything about anyone's dad. Look into it. The only thing I know is he said, "Oh, he told Izzy that he's not actually really. He's more African than him, or whatever." That's the only thing. That's the only thing I've heard. Do I I mean that was dumb too. I, I'm, look, listen, I thought he was I'm an wrong. overall maybe like I'm gentleman. I don't know. Maybe I'm just hearing rumors, but I'm a Strickland. I'm a Strickland guy. I just, I like Strickland. Uh, I, no, I, I do too, but. I'm going to be rooting for him. Yeah. Colby is another monster in and of no, itself, Colby's a weirdo. But... I mean, he's just, he's, it's phony. I mean, you can see right through it, you know, with Colby. So. I, I, I think, I don't get what he's trying to be. Yeah. Like the next McGregor, but you're not. No. So I don't, I don't. I don't know. Because people know um, he's but, actually like one of the nicest guys like off camera. But yeah, he's just playing a role, which is like, it's corny. It's like, dude, we can, we know you're playing a character that, you know, and it's not working. There's a couple guys I really, really like. I really like Patty. Um, I, I, I love, oh, you don't like Patty? Oh, come on. Tell me about him. I don't that know. fight, that, that fight with Ferguson was so unfair to me. Ferguson has just become the, the whipping boy in the UFC yeah, now. Yeah, he's it's toast. Like, he's poor, so toast. Dude, he's toast, but like, like do something for him, man. He's, his face is just getting beat to a pulp. He's starting yeah. to look like that guy from the Goonies. Dude, get him you know? to fight but fucking like, Alex for God's sakes. I mean, Jesus, like that's all he I can do. I mean, really... <laughs> I don't know. And right. then, you know, Sugar uh, Sugar Sean. I love Sugar Sean. He is, yeah, okay. He's so sure. real. Yeah. He's so raw. Yeah. I, on a personal level too, like he's a good guy. Like he's fun. He's raw. You love seeing him. He's scrappy. He's like a Diaz brother, you know, like oh, they remind me of Nate a little bit. I love Nate. I'm a Diaz army. Love those guys. That guy, you cannot knock him out. No, he's a zombie. You cannot knock him no, out. No, no. no, I'm a big Diaz but, guy. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I love that. Um, but so yeah, UFC uh, will be good. This Are you going to be on, on 20th, right? It's next weekend. So th- I think it's 21st, maybe. 21st. Maybe 20th, 21st, maybe um, I, no, it's the 20th. I think Saturday is the 20th. Yeah. Okay. Are you gonna- um, I will not be. Okay. Brandon is headed out to Austin. Uh, they're going to be at Rogan's club, uh, the mothership. I think they're going to be recording out of there. Nice. Yeah. Brandon's coming to Vancouver in March. So I'm going to go watch. That yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. Be sure to. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to DM him too. I, his, yeah. His brother actually follows me, so. Um, uh, Jay's awesome. He's a good guy. Yeah, he's good shit. Okay, thank you, Sanaz. I really thank appreciate Thank you, this. guys. If you want to plug anything one last time. No, man. Hey, Football Sexy, download the app. Check out our podcast. We're on all streaming services. It, uh, literally ask your, I don't want to say A-L-E-X-A, because it, she'll respond to me, to turn on Football Sexy. You'll hear us talk. Uh, if you're in the LA area, our Super Bowl party is going to be awesome at the Ice House, like I said giveaways from adidas dime industries we're gonna have food we won't be talking too much because we want to watch the game but uh it'll be fun 
And please just check us out. I love the support we get from our squad. And thank you guys again for having me on here today. This has been awesome. Thank you for coming on, Sanam. Thank really you. Really appreciate it. We'll uh, thank follow you guys. up with you for sure. Yeah. Okay. See you. Bye.